I really see that there's potential in the racing. Yeah, the jump was designed to be the advantage, and he took the opposite, the, the Joker lane, and that turned out to be faster for him. And then Jesse Ryan caught on to that, and the guys are... It's fun. You see the competitive side, what works, what doesn't work, where they can cut some time, and I think they're looking at it at a different aspect, you totally. know, than a, than a stunt competition. Need it's it's a different mindset. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Get Vertical Real Talk. This is a Hurley stunt writing podcast. Our goal with this podcast and company is to introduce you to the people and ideas to level up your stunt writing game professionally. Today, I'm super stoked because I had the Sly Fox guys on my podcast. They're the dudes that created Drifter Cross. Now, you guys might not know what Drifter Cross is, but I think you soon will. They just left Daytona and they threw it down with a race that involved Harley stunt riders. And this is a huge deal for us, you guys, because this is another way that we can push stunt riding to the next level and take it more mainstream and get in front of people that don't see us. So I'm super excited to introduce you guys to them because I think you're gonna see that this is actually a really sick way to include Harley stunt riding into racing. And what's, what's dope after talking about this whole thing with them is if we include ourselves in the race scene then more people might accept us because everyone loves racing so brands are going to get on board that means more money into the sport and that means more money in our pockets as stunt riders also if you're a really good drifter but maybe you're not like super well-rounded as a stunt rider you need to get on this shit now while there's open registration not many people are, know about this yet, and this is your time to shine. As a newer and maybe less exposed stunt rider, get in there. You're going to be competing with some of the top dogs like Jesse Ryan and Tizninski. And I think that this is a time to get in front of the crowd while you can. So if you're not really known or your skills aren't really there yet, this is your time to shine. Anyways, help me in welcoming the masterminds behind Drifter Cross. You know, when I first heard about Drifter Cross, I was a little skeptical about it because I'm like, how does Drifter Cross work with Harley stunt riders? I don't understand how it would fit in. And after my skepticism, I was telling him my argument was like, stunt rider Harley stunt riders do not practice timed drifting. Mm -hmm. Like, how how does this work? You know? And he's like, well, they're gonna have to start practicing. And I was shocked to see. All my friends practicing right before Drift Across uh, the Daytona event. So I wanted to ask you guys, where did you guys come up with the idea to include Harley stunt riders in this whole Drift Across? Kind of a funny story how it all happened. It's really, he's the brainchild of it all. Um, Eddie and I kind of come from the racing side of things with the Bagger Racing League and King of the Baggers and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I... I come from a point where I respect the stunt community. I love it. I'm not doing it, but I appreciate it. And we're also, we're going really heavy into the racing scene. So I wanted to figure out a way to bring them together. And Rob Bido said Longhorn's the guy. And that's when he came into the picture, made the phone call. And Yeah, I come from a super cross background. I worked for James Stewart and I've got championship in the lights West Coast with uh, Justin Hill and did super cross forever. And it's it's a lot like, a rut track, you know, practice basically on a dirt bike, except for on a Harley. And the level of riding is there on the Harleys. Now we can probably do a lot more with the course, you know, and keep speeds up, but that's basically how you control the speeds is with the course. You can make it a faster course. You can make it a slower one, just depending on how far you set things apart. But what, what made you guys think to do it on pavement? And, and and think of the Harley stunt scene to well, to do that thing. I was a, a motocross mechanic and I started riding Harleys and stunting Harleys and hanging out with a lot of the guys. And just then the drifting was the only thing anybody wanted to do, you know. And the other thing that I was thinking of is we're breaking the law on the streets. And I wanted to get past that. Mm -hmm. And if we're racing in a parking lot, that's actually something that maybe the industry could get behind. 
because they help us out in moto, you know, and we all ran through the same thing with free riding, you know, it's illegal to go free riding. So everybody built a course in their backyard and got the content in their backyard. We could yeah. do the same thing. We just have to do it somewhere, you know, at an event. And then that's where you mesh the ideas. And yeah. So how did you guys come together with the the ideas? Rob bought us from Bagger Race League. He was <clears throat> actually at Yamaha whenever I was working there talking about BRL. And uh, he was wanting to build his own, you know, racing league. And then I was like, that that's awesome, you know. That maybe I could do the same thing if I had something as cool, you know. Oh, that's dope. So you were kind of inspired by the Bagger Race League. Oh, 100%, league. yeah. I love that. And, and then... Now you're creating your own, you guys are creating your own thing. And what's cool about it is it's so different, but after seeing what you guys pulled off, it's, so I didn't really watch the first one. Where, where was it? Minnesota? Uh, Willow Springs. Willow, Willow Springs. Springs. I didn't watch the first one, but I kind of heard a little bit about it. It was just, it didn't seem like there was much marketing towards it at first. It was more of a, a proof of concept. Mm. Okay. To okay. see if we could pull it off and make it work. You know, like some things sound really cool on paper and then whenever you go and you try to like make it happen, but we'd already been riding some stuff and trying some things. And I, I mean, I, I think that we're still growing and the way that we're going to go racing mm. will be completely different in maybe a year or so, you know, with the way that we open the course up and the speeds. But you know, you don't always have to just do a circle around a cone. We can do a lot, you know. So this is a, 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 a the idea is evolving as you. I think build. the writing's evolving and letting us do more. Like the more I see and the more that the guys can do, mm -hmm. the more we try to incorporate that into the tracks. How how do you guys build the track? Well, um, we're calling them practice days now, but we try to get everyone together a day or two beforehand and give everyone an equal opportunity to go out there because we really learn with the riders getting out there and letting us know this turn works, this circle works, this doesn't work. You know, without that, it's kind of a challenge. We can't just throw something out there and expect it to stick and work. So um, from the very beginning, it's just it's been trial and error. We only have two under our belt and we're learning every time we go and we're perfecting it as we go and he's more of the mastermind with the riders and the technical stuff where i'm more behind the scenes like banners need to be over here you know marketing over here and just kind of the, putting the show on and making sure it's presentable well you kind of need different minds to to put things together and gabe you wrote in both of them huh mm -hmm. and what are your thoughts on it and how has it changed from the first one to the second one yeah i mean from the first one obviously we we kind of used what we had at Willow Springs, we got, you know, we came in there and it was definitely a tighter spot um, course. Mm -hmm. It was a lot smaller, but um, we worked with what we had and honestly it worked out perfect. And, um, and that's another thing that I like so much about it is all the riders get an opinion kind of on the course and how they want to set it up. And, you know, I think everybody agrees. They don't like to make it like too easy, like to, have some challenge in there for sure not all left turns exactly <laughs> um there's some less there's some rights we got the jump now <laughs> i love that by the way <laughs> my bike didn't <laughs> what I, were your thoughts on the jump i dig the jump but after i hit it like two times my uh you know the saddle or the uh floorboard uh brackets those things kept on bending because i don't have them re reinforced do you think you'll modify your bike a little bit more for sure for sure. For drifter costs yeah. specifically. Yeah. Well, I was shocking. I told Eddie too. I was like shocked that my buddy, um, shout out to Cameron at Gnarly's. Um, he told me that someone came to him asking if they, he can build a bike for drifter cross. Nice. And it's like, wow, that's so cool. You guys are onto something, you know? And, um, what I was going to, um, mention before is that initially, my skepticism, you know, was kicking in. But then after seeing, like you said, the proof of concept, after seeing what you guys did at Daytona, I almost see this being like its own thing, kind of like Supercross and, you know, the Drifter Cross is its own concept because it's not really a competition. It's a race. Exactly. You know, and it's it's almost like you guys have built your own own concept here. It's pretty cool. Well, you're exactly right. It is a race. And kind of to back up, we were talking on the drive to here tonight. Like, mm -hmm. 
we can see people building bikes specific for this and they go in that direction and kind of creating the way that people build their setups and stuff. So it's funny that you, you brought that yeah, up. Yeah, it's almost like a, their, its own niche. So stunt riding itself, especially Harley stunt riding, is an extremely small, small niche. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you're enjoying the episode. Real quick plug, I want to invite you guys to our online mm -hmm. wheelie coaching course. This is exclusively made for Harley riders. We created a three-stage progression method that is guaranteed to teach you how to wheelie. This is for day one learning riders. It's broken down from day one all the way to balance point. With this course, you get our exclusive members only get vertical app that makes it easier to access while you're at the lot practicing. You also get to join our Facebook community where we have a group experts in there all ready to help and other Harley Stunt Riders learning from each other. You'll also get invited with online group coaching with Bruce and I where you can ask us direct questions about your progress and any struggles you're having. You can sign up at getverticalcoaching.com. Link will be in the description. Anyways, back to the show. But now you guys are like almost tapping into something and it's really, it's kind of cool to watch, you know, and that's why I was curious what made you think of Harley stunt riding and how that and it's because you rode Harleys. Yes. Uh, have you guys ever thought about including other motorcycles? Yes. We're trying to. It's just majority of our field are all Harley guys. So we would love to have some Indians, some Yamahas, you name it. We want more out there. We want the manufacturers coming Sport in competing. Bikes? That would be probably a standalone class, but um yeah, and we're not opposed to a sport bike class either. Maybe in the future. Yeah. Buell would be cool. Buell would be cool. Yeah, Buell's on the Fine. come up. Right now. Mm -hmm. It's right now. It's Are we letting people young. know about our uh, practice day? I think we should let that out. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so. There's whispering about over there. Uh, April 13th, we're going to have a practice day at Willow Springs. Okay. And we may have some sport bikes show up to that particular event just to show proof of concept for sport bike. I mean, I don't think that we have to stop there, you know? Yeah. Go as far as cars as well. It's just depending on size and of the lot or what we're using. That's dope. Yeah, I think that's cool. First of all, how do you get into Drift Across? Is it invite only? No, do you, you, go on, no. you go on to our registration on the website or actually on the um, our Instagram and you just sign up. Like It's on the website. Yeah, it's on yeah, the website as well. The, the website. link to the website. Drifter-cross.com, I believe. And then um, you can pick, go in the Athletes Lounge and you pick the event that you want to register for. You click in, fill out all the information pay your registration fee and you're in um we're gonna have to cap it off at a certain point but it's first come first serve um, oh wow so the, so whoever signs up now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is in yeah you guys don't vet them at all i think that's something we might need to think about because of course we want you know there's guys that we for sure want there or you know the guys that are fast and have won it in the past we want them to come back and we don't want them to miss the ball on registration and we kind of got to stay on people like, listen, registration's open. We can't guarantee you're going to make it. So it's all trial and error. It's still really fresh. But and then there's also that we've had, you know, somebody on the podium both times that's not really what you would consider a top rider. Right. Or as no a, as a yeah. or an underdog or someone that, you know, really not, not saying they're not. A, they, they were great riders. Yeah. They're just not known, known in the it. Instagram world or, or social yeah, media. With, exactly. with that. And I think that's cool because you're not just like the next guy that, that accidentally got to get into this co you know competition. You're the guy that registered, signed up, and went racing, you know? Yeah. And you showed what you have. You, yeah. You kind of put yourself on the line. Well, what's sick about it is, and I think I talked to you guys about it on the phone, or maybe it was just Eddie, but um, like females can win this. Yeah. Yeah. If they compete. Yeah. If they're really see. if they're really good at drifting, mm -hmm. but maybe they're not gonna be a super well rounded stunt rider and beat the the men at like a traditional competition, they can beat them at drifter cross. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And like you know, have you competed at brawls and stuff? I haven't, no. But you know it's I've done I've done a few fucking shows. Tough out there. I haven't done um I haven't done uh uh competitions, no. But you 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 watch, I've seen, oh, it's, watch it's, yeah I've watched, like right. how are you gonna beat those guys? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're it's, it's so gnarly. Beasts. It's so gnarly. You know. Nice. Yeah, so I think that's cool that you guys are so niche that you can kind of like just practice drifting only and possibly, you know, beat the dudes. Absolutely. The majority of shows too, like, I mean, what do you see? You see burnouts and drifting. So, I mean, I think that's maybe where the idea kind of came across too. 
Yeah, I'm not Without really I'm not really a drift guy. Like I do more wheelies than anything, yeah. you know. But I really see that there's potential in the racing. Like the what the guys are doing take at Daytona. Everybody thought it was going to be just as quick to jump over the thing and but you know, Corey saw something different and he decided he was going to really back it into the the thing and he he took you know he was the fastest time but yeah. he was really seconds. fast yeah, yeah. really was. fast yeah the jump was designed to be the advantage and he took the opposite the the joker lane and that turned out to be faster for him and then jesse ryan caught on to that and the guys are it's fun you see the competitive side what works what doesn't work where they can cut some time and it, i think they're looking at it at a different aspect totally. you know than a, than a stunt competition it's, it's a different mindset in each one everyone was like all the riders were talking to each other you know, communicating like, oh, this I mean, we we're talking about tire pressure. We were talking about like, which way we thought was faster. And... Suspension preload. Yeah. Do Do um, you think that it's a better vibes? Like, I know you haven't competed at like any of the other competitions, but do you think it's the vibes are better because it's a race? I'd say so. I'd say so. I think it's maybe it's a little bit less stressful on the riders. You know, less tense. Yeah. I think everyone's just chill, having a good time, and um, and just there to have fun. Yeah, it is a lot of pressure at the at like a traditional competition because as you know, Gabe, like you have to have and you guys probably know too, like a sp specific tire for specific tricks. Mm -hmm. So to have like burnouts, drifts and wheelies. Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. one tire, one tire pressure that takes like a lot of skill. Right. You know, for especially sure. on the Harleys, you know, it's just it's it's challenging, you know, so. Mm -hmm. To be able to focus on one thing, it's honestly a lot less pressure. Find that perfect in between. Right? Yeah, exactly. And you're like, okay, I know I'm drifting, so let's figure out what a good tire and tire pressure is for drifting. Mm -hmm. In Period. a motor package, like a lot of motor helps, you know? And yeah. then if you have a stock 80-inch Evo, you're probably not going to do too much drifting, you know? Yeah, totally, so. totally. So where do you guys think you... You guys have nine total events this th just this year. What the we, we fuck? Started with nine. Yeah, I mean, everyone's wanting us to bring it here, there, and everywhere. You're probably getting um, hit up a lot. Yes, we are, especially when Daytona happened. Willow was just a little taster, and then we really upped the ante at Daytona. Um, we're hoping to bring it wherever the budget will take us. I mean, at the end of the day, we still got to make sure we can put it on, and we got to get from one side of the country to the other, hotel rooms and food and all that. Um, we're probably going to add Laconia. For sure, on top of everything, and that that's a given. Um, yeah, we have a lot. What what all financially? What does it all look like for one event? I'd say it's probably ten grand to stop. Yeah, with food and travel and oh, for you guys too. Food, yeah. travel, insurance, sure. uh, room and board, um, just all the factors. You know, we have some sponsorship help, but um. Yeah, some of it coming. <laughs> Things add up. They, they come at you out of nowhere. Some of the venues we put it on at, you know, can accommodate certain things. Some of them can't. So it's just kind of trial and error, depending on where we go. Insurance is covered here. Insurance isn't covered here. Or oh, shit. we have fencing here. No fencing here. So it's all dependent on the venue. And you guys are just sending it, huh? We it's, are full send. We're, we're just we're like we'll figure it out as we we're go. We're so deep. We're not. We're not turning. You guys around, can't so. pull out now. You already no. have a, a full year schedule. That's insane. You guys are brave. That's... I'm pretty confident, though. I mean, honestly, I'm optimistic about it. Um, you know, getting the athletes, we feel, is like one of the easier parts. You know, people are excited. A lot of these guys come from racing backgrounds and and dirt bikes and mm -hmm. such. So it's new. It's something exciting. It's just it's different. And we're going to a lot of places that already draws the communities. You know the the Four Corners or the Buffalo Trip, Daytona's, Laconia's, um, the BRL's draws the racing crowd. And so we're, we're piggybacking off of a lot of places that should make it easier for us to do. Well, that helps with sponsor sponsorships too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, that's a huge deal because that's hard on its own. Yes. Like people <clears throat> probably think that the prize money is coming straight out of Sly Fox pockets, but really it's, the sponsorships sponsorships um registration fees help with with paying the riders off on the, the podium um 
a lot of the sponsors have been pretty generous with helping out with products. You know, Recluse came in and they're helping out the top three guy with clutches. That's Legend sick. came in and they're helping out with uh, second place. Everyone, whoever gets second gets a, a set of suspension. And then third place is a, a shred wedge. Cool. That's a tongue twister to me. I always screw that. Shred, shred wedge. Shred, 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 shred wedge. Shred wedge. Shred wedge. But um, they, they uh, hooked it up for third place. And then they gave us a couple, too, for all the guys to do tire changes stuff in the pits. So. Oh, awesome. Thank you to all the sponsors, by the way. You guys are huge. Okay, I seriously cannot be the only one that does not trust insurance companies. Don't you feel like they never pay you what you deserve for your accident? That's why I always call Law Tigers. They're specialized in motorcycle attorneys. Yes, there's a difference between motorcycles and cars. That's why you need to call Law Tigers because they are the experts and you are not. And what's dope about them is you don't have to pay anything out of pocket. It comes out of your settlement. So if they don't get you paid, then they don't get paid. And the best part is once you call them, they take care of everything for you. You don't have to think about it at all until you're signing the paperwork saying case closed. Don't let these insurance companies screw you over. Call Law Tigers and tell them that Drea sent you. If you're local to Arizona, call my boy Jay. I'll leave his info in the description below. Well, and I appreciate the sponsors too because this is only going to propel the sport forward. And it's like a full economy circle. Like the money just keeps going around and around and around. Especially if it's something they can get behind. And I think that if we're racing and we take and we elevate this to a, a more professional level that we could actually have that, you know what I mean? Like manufacturers coming in and going, you know what? They look professional enough to actually use this and take this as a marketing platform and go with it, you know, and there's no reason we shouldn't. Totally. So what things are you guys doing to <clears throat> make it more professional? Timing. The timing system, um, we're working on this timing system that like populates the time on a live feed start to finish and it'll show like the headshots of the rider and Jesse Ryan's first and then so-and-so second, third, fourth and it all populates and organizes. We had some slip ups in Daytona so we had to rely on old faithful timing system which is a, it's a laser system like one for your garage door mm -hmm. when you walk through it triggers it mm -hmm. so when they take off they trigger it the time goes and then when they come back they go through it and it stops. So oh, that one's just harder for us to manage because we have to keep track where the new timing system will populate. It, it's a whole job that we don't even have to think about. Oh, and that's a huge stress right there. That's a huge stress. It keeps it in order. Yeah, it keeps it in order. Everyone can see where they're at, where they place in. So moving forward, that should be fine-tuned. We attempted for it in Daytona. Unfortunately, some things didn't work out that were out of our control. But it all worked out at the end of the day. I mean, from the outside looking in, you wouldn't even have known we had no. timing issues. No, no. So at all. it's all well, learning as we go. So what right now you guys are doing like one rider at a time and timing their their speed and then releasing the next rider. Yes. In the future, are you guys planning on possibly head to head? It depends on the real estate to build the course. Yeah. So if we don't have enough real estate, it might get hard to do head to head. Because if you do head to head, it's not them going against each other; it's them going against each other on two identically built courses. If that makes sense. No, it doesn't. Can you explain that? So you want to explain it? Yeah, I, I, I'm yeah. not from the racing world. Bracket Forgive racing, base basically, if you were to go bracket racing, you're gonna have two identical courses. One's gonna have maybe more lefts if it's on that side facing each other, and then one's gonna have more rights. Okay. You would be able to the identical mirrored courses oh i've seen this okay okay but then if you were the fastest you get lane choice okay which means okay i like side. yeah you have to pick which side you get that twice that oh, may wow. help eliminate people that you might not been a, uh, been able to eliminate maybe you're better at lefts than they are and you just pick the lefts and you try to get around them that way you know Oh, I see. But they race at the same time. So. Yeah, since two out of three. So you guys don't see... I saw a video, a secret video of... Who was it? It was uh, Stretch and Jesse. Stretch and Je Jesse racing head-to-head. -to head-to-head. Yeah, head. They were playing around. They were playing around. That yeah. looked fun. Which we I, also I have another that. concept sure, right? for yeah. as well that we've talked about even before that all be, that. Uh, it's cool, but it would be really hard to, Get the to space tackle. For. Yeah, well... Not necessarily the space, but just, I don't know, it could turn into, 
It, it could get a little aggressive. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know it's better than anyone. <laughs> to be honest with you, the track shouldn't have full circles on it if we're going to do that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We should keep the track flowing and moving forward, or you know, just always just going from one turn to the next and just kind of drifting them together, if that makes sense, instead of actually like circling because then you can get bunched up or hit each other. Mm. But if we were to just make a course that flowed like a go-kart track and put more than one person on there, yeah, we could do it for sure. But I think that it's more of a liability of, you know, who wants to destroy their Harley getting into a wreck on a race course, unless, you know, it was a purpose built motorcycle or if it was something that was just for that. And that means they have to go faster. Yes. Right. Like yeah. Speeds are up. Second or third definitely going to raise speeds if you don't do you know slow it that's how we keep things slower mm. but you know the guys every time we go and we do a track it's like can we speed it up and they say that most of them do so it would be cool to see, it yeah. would be cool to see. Like, we cool, like mid second gear and then coming into slamming into first and what were your what are your thoughts you 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 what are you you raced you raced not yeah competed. you yeah. raced i did two of them yeah. um, so what are your thoughts on that speed it up or speeding it up I think it'd be cool to see to try out, you know, do, I mean, we're not going into third gear, but you know, <laughs> shifting into set, like coming out of a corner, going to second, like midway and then having to drop it down and go, you know, back down to 10 miles an hour, five miles an hour into the next cone could get a little sketchy because it almost puts more, fast. more skill into it. Exactly. More yeah. aggressiveness. Because you're actually sliding into your turns and there's a lot of front brake control as you come in. So you don't want to overshoot the corner. So you kind of really gain a lot of speed. You do a brake tag, right? To break the rear loose. And then you're coming into the corner. But as you do that, you're obviously not trying to overshoot the corner. So you're just yeah. really controlled on the brake. And then the next thing you know, you hit your corner the way you want. You release the clutch and then you're going, you know. It's just kind of a something that I think that most guys can do, but they don't practice. Like, yeah. I'm going to turn there. Yeah, I feel like we stunt riders are just straight freestyle. Right. You do what you feel like doing in that moment and you just flow. It just flows. Right. But when you have to have precision, um, that's a whole different skill. Yes. And know? there's guys that are very consistent with it, you know. And you see some people breaking in way too late, way too early. Yeah. You just have to find that. It's really cool to watch. Like once everybody gets it everybody eleva elevates everybody else like one guy will go and then the next guy is even faster and that's they, they what, see a lot you know that's what i think that's why i think that it's important for us to start doing more competitions and now i guess races yeah. within the harley stunt niche because that's how you grow the sport and i get a lot of hate or probably and this is probably just in my head for saying this but um we're stuck with this foot break only shit and I know people don't like the handbrakes on Harleys because they want to keep it stock. But how are we going to grow? You know, and the drifter cross, I could see that being a thing if but we just need more competitions in general. And and like you're saying, the bike, like what's a drifter cross bike look like? What's a real stunt bike look like? We're riding Harleys and we're trying to do wheelies on them. And yeah. you want to stand up and do circles, but you want to do them with just a foot brake. OK, yeah, whatever. Do it. But I think that at the end of the day, if you lengthen the swing arm on a bike and went drifting, you're, you know, we, there's going to be a point where we have to say no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like where the limit is on the bike. So what do you, where do you see a problem or issue if people start modding their bike for drift across? Oh, that's, that's coming. I'm sure. Like, it's like you said, come. it's already kind of happening, but we have a rule book and we've thought about put some forethought into all that. Like we don't want extended swing arms and we don't want all this, but we do want race bikes, you know, like pretty much purpose built race bikes. That'd be great. There would be cool to have a class that was by the industry that was purpose built race bikes that they had athletes that they hired to come race. Like if you had Vance and Hines build a race bike and go race drift across, that'd be really cool, obviously. But you know what I mean? We're doing it until that happens. Do you see like Super Hooligan and them coming over to Drifter Cross? Be hard to say. I don't know. Maybe. 
we've opened I've been surprised of a lot of things that have came our way you know and it's just i think we're opening eyes to another a new segment something fresh something fun something different and race you know not we'll see what happens this season will bring a lot we're only two in and you know it's created pretty good buzz i think so, totally yeah and like you're saying, people are hitting you up for events and to join their what they got going on. Are you guys going to start trimming the fat here and, and getting rid of some events that you're not happy with or, or um, don't bring? We're going to see how this year goes. You know, it's really until the year's done that we can evaluate what we should do different, what we should add, what we should trim. Um, it's hard to say, you know, it, it was extremely hard to pitch this to sponsors because they're like, what is it? You guys are like. 300 followers on your <laughs> yeah, instagram right. and like it's it just, just so new it was hard to explain it it was just like trust me i'm not trying to screw you just stay tuned watch it and some of these people came running, running back like okay we get you now we understand and it's fun so uh, the first one was tough to get sponsorship support one we put it together two weeks before <laughs> willow springs was even happening so that was kind of a scramble but um we got sponsorship because we didn't ask for much. I was like, all right, we'll we'll throw a couple hundred bucks at this and see how it goes. And it, it went really well. You know, we didn't have as much real estate to build the course as we liked. But, um, yeah, I'd say it was pretty successful. It was a good turnout. Yeah. You learn a lot. Every time yeah. you go and you do something, mm -hmm. you learn a lot. And the thing that we're coming to is that we just want to do a better job at it every time we do yeah. it. You know what I mean? And cut the problems out. And... You just have to hit your marks. Every time you go, you got to make a change and make sure that you hit those marks. And as long as you do that, you're going to be better every time. It's just like riding. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, what are you guys promising to these sponsors when you, you pitch them? Um, well, you know, they're going to get some eyeballs on it. They're going to be a part of something that's new and fresh. Um, I mean, we had 26 riders compete in Daytona, so you spread out the social media with all those guys are probably in the million marker at least following and in reach and reach yeah. yeah so that's really it you're gonna get the reach you're gonna be part of something new and if you're hesitant just stay along for the ride i don't care if you're not on board right now like yeah. i get it i get it if you don't want to throw some money at something you don't understand but just stay tuned you yeah. might change your mind totally that's all so totally that it is hard to like get the support when you haven't done it yet. Right. No, it's really hard. We, Even we if learned. we have a relationship with you. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I'm sure you guys know we're trying to do this, the Get Vertical stunt games. And we're like, come on, Gary. We're like, <laughs> you know us, dude. You can't help us out. Yeah, Gary. Come on. <laughs> like, come on. You know, so it's, it, and it's stressful. Like, just our little stunt games so, uh, relying on someone else. Yeah to do this because we're like oh it looks like we're gonna have to pay for it if he pulls out you know so yeah i can't imagine doing i've it dove the into level. the sly fox budget a little bit and pulled <laughs> away from things we typically do but i'm not regretting it you know i see i see the bigger picture of this That's and so I, cool. i'm positive that we're going somewhere with this as long as we hit all of our marks and we do it professionally mm -hmm. and right and every time we do better where we didn't do so well the first time when you so. when you say professionally what do you mean by that can you clarify it uh the show's got to be put on professional i mean daytona went really well but we learned that we need to be more in control of the crowd so we need to build a perimeter you can't come over here if you don't if you're not allowed over this line you know that people kind of got the concept at daytona that it was like a hangout and started hanging out where they shouldn't be and getting in the course and we just have to have more control of our show because we're trying to put on a show we want to put on the show but if there's all these interferences it gets in the way of our show so being professional yeah more like this isn't a free-for-all it's controlled there you can't go in unless you have a media vest mm -hmm. and you're approved media you can't go in there with your cell phones things like that exactly you know, if you want those credentials, you speak to us ahead of time and we'll work something out. You know, if you want to be involved, there's, there's protocols just like just like any event. <laughs> so, you know, we, we want it to be professional. We want it to look good for the sponsors. We we don't want it looking like a party. I, so I love that about you guys, though, because you guys actually really do pull off that image and image is everything 
when you're one pitching it to sponsors, but two to get people to actually take take the shit seriously because if you're looking like you're just pulling shit out of your ass, then no one's gonna show up. Right. The right. crowd or the the riders that want to compete. Well, and we like the burnouts and wheelies. You know, if you maybe throw a runaway and you want to hype the crowd up, and it's that's more completely than... cool. You know, maybe throw a little wheelie in, whatever. Smoke show at the end of the show for people that are approved to be in the the course. Yeah. You know? But just no out of control. I don't know. Chaos. Chaos. Yeah, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. So. Yeah, totally, totally. But keep it minimal and just like know that you're you're holding somebody else's run up whenever you're doing that you know it's just like we're trying to get through our program and move along and keep it keep it flowing and we're trying to have a live broadcast or a feed as well you know and with our timing and scoring you'll be able to watch it at home just on your phone i i love how you guys do that it's so sick how you guys set it up and and you're able to watch it live Mm -hmm. because then you know family at home could watch and it really does bring it to a different level of professionalism. And as far as can I touch on what, what I think we're trying to do as yeah, far as professionalism, we, we want to elevate the sport to where we have a platform to show ourselves the, like right now, it'd be cool to just everybody that rides a skateboard can go and participate in X games. Mm-hmm. We don't have that as far as a stunt community, which is, probably one of the most extreme sports you could possibly do doesn't have that platform. No. But if we did, would you like to participate in that? You know, would you like to go to that? Wouldn't you like to see that if you were a stunt rider? Fuck yeah. Uh, well, X Games, I mean, I'm a skateboarder, snowboarder at heart, and that's a dream of mine. Even if I don't go compete, just like if we bring an event to X Games, I think we can all agree that's kind of the goal. Where we yeah, want to fake for it. everybody wants to be a part of something like that, especially if there's a platform. And I yeah. think that the writing's there. I think that the athletes are there. And just don't even call them stunt riders. You're athletes. At, athletes. at that point, whenever you're racing and you're doing something that, you know, you love and you can actually do it without breaking the law and put it in front of spectators and do it the right way. I think that we have something, you know, if not, then, you know, there's no reason to do it. Yeah. Well, I love that you guys are doing this and including the Harley stunt community, but I am a little sad. There's no wheelies involved. The only reason why is because that's the heart of stunt riding. There are though. There was a second gear wheelie done from the back corner (laughs) <laughs> for the first corner, was that Jesse? Jesse actually, and it was really fast. It was really, fast. yeah, it was super fast. So you can't say that there's not wheelies. There are. It's just whether or not it, you know, connected the course. He shifted as soon as he came out of the back corner, and I think he was on top Call of the, shit. yeah, right on top of the cone. Oh, so he had a pretty cool wheelie off. There. And he had a really cool. <laughs> I guess the only reason why so. I feel sad about it is because I'm like, I want the stunt scene to keep moving forward. And I see you guys doing big things yeah. and I want you guys to help us go there, yeah. you know? And yeah. it's like, I, if it's a race, I'm like, is it stunt riding? The concept's been talked about. If there's like a section to do it, it's just, I don't know. I don't you guys don't aren't attracted make it. to it because it's not your. No, not necessarily that. I think it just makes. I don't know. This is like a speed thing, you know? Uh, like, yeah. It's something different. It's yeah. Like you always have the shows and and competitions and stuff to do all the wheelies and all the other stuff, but this is something different that to try out. No, I definitely love what the, what you guys yeah. are doing, but I'm just like wishing someone would more professional would do the the thing yeah. too. Saucy did the, the jump. The wheelie jump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was just sick. That was. I have no, a I mean, feeling that sooner or later. When you get a good exit out of the last one into our new upright, that there's probably going to be a lot of wheelies into the end zone or as ever, whatever you want to finish line. As yeah, you, that'd yeah. be sick. I'm sure you're going to see it. Yeah. Slow wheelie slow cop. Wheelie or it could be like an intermission. <laughs> <Yeah>. Slow wheelie. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, what about stoppies? Like a, you know, um, intermission show in the future or something like that to it's, bring it bring we're it all in the same kind of field so the same same industry yeah. yeah yeah totally we even want to include the kids and maybe have like a little strider oh, race yeah. or the stay oh sick whatever gosh, you want to call please. it yeah, so. there's like nothing that involves kids i swear i mean they have the strider races but it's just kids or you know 
there's no motorcycle motors yeah, involved with, you know. That would be neat to have at least a lap or so for the kids. But, you know, whenever you get to go out there and just do something like that as a kid, you'll remember that for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, hell yeah. It goes a long way. I feel like we made a lot of uh, young fans as far as Daytona. There was a lot of kids there, and they thought it was the coolest thing they ever seen. Well, what's cool is you guys are a smaller course, so you're able to watch the whole thing right? Mm -hmm. by standing there. Whereas, like, the big... Um, race courses you can't watch it you have to watch it on the screen right. mm -hmm. and it's not as fun you know i think that it is pretty intimate and the track's pretty cool um as far as the things that were cool about it is there were a couple of um aha moments whenever you saw somebody do something that was just like oh wow you can connect that you know and and there was a couple of those but I would like to see more of those with people. You know what I mean? Like it's probably going to happen sooner or later. You know, people are going to connect things that you probably didn't think were possible. You Keep know? pushing the limit. Yeah. Pushing the, pushing the sport. Totally. Sure. totally. Now, Gabe, what, as far as a, um, s s like bike setup, what do you think you are going to do differently to the bike? Well, the bike that I brought out there, um, I have my buddy South, South County cycles, shout out to them. Um, we slapped this road king that I got last minute. I trade my moto for it. Um, I put the 103 in it and the six speed trans. Um, I decided to take that one. Thought is, you know, add more power and it would be better. Um, the only thing I think I really need to change is suspension. I need to raise it up. Oh, really? How big I am. I was scraping kind of <laughs> everywhere on the floorboards. Um, I need to brace those mounts on the bottom because. Mine started sagging pretty bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, so there's a lot and, of shit tire. you gotta do. I had a Shinko 7.7. Seven <laughs> you gotta change your whole damn me. bike. Um, <laughs> that whole weekend, you kept saying you need to switch that tire and you did not switch that. Well, I couldn't find one. No oh, one was that the size. issue? I mean, I okay. A few people's shops. And I mean, yeah, I could have maybe looked better. Hey, you did pretty damn good given the. I, I made it around the track. Yeah. Right? We're yeah. lucky that Gabe had a bike. Yeah, yeah exactly time. exactly i was stoked for it just to get out there and just to be able to ride so hell yeah um, but yeah i mean i think that's the only thing i really need to do is suspension what'd you place i don't even know i didn't look do you guys know no anyone know i think you're a top 10 at least no he was just outside of the top 10 cyrus was the last top 10 was he yeah. okay um, thank you next time uh, so what, better on the road glide so i get did you 12th yeah i mean obviously the group of riders it was a lot less but uh, okay. still. it was we a still stacked good, field we still had it was pretty field. stacked it was a oh, stacked yeah. field we were overwhelmed but <laughs> like, yeah but it was good yeah that's that's sick so are you gonna go home and practice for sure yeah yeah no more wheelies no for sure still wheelies yeah wheelies though see this is the thing with the harley wheelies once you know how to wheelie the harley you kind of get bored and once you know how to drift it's addicting oh it's, in my opinion like it's i love fun. it yeah like, i love to drift over doing wheelies totally the but. wheelies the wheelies are um a shock factor for like crowds but mm -hmm. they kind of get boring i don't know and i think it's because of the it's not very technical on a harley it's just easy in my opinion comes pretty easy i, I mean clutching it up is hard but once you're in it it's, it's cruising, just like it just goes yeah. i think the crowd loved it too it was kind of a change of pace i mean i think everybody's kind of been Seeing the wheelies mm -hmm. everywhere, but they haven't seen too much of, uh, yeah, I guess they have seen the drifting, but I don't know. This is just, it's a whole different event. And I think people, I think even the crowds are really stoked on it. Well, um, any, when, we saw. when you watch any race, you're like, oh, like you're on edge the whole time. Like, and even though you're not the rider, you're, you feel like you are, right. you know? And, yeah. and oh yeah, um, all of us were like, even to the other riders, like, you know, in awe. Of like some of the stuff that people were doing. You're yeah. really yeah. in it, you know? And with the traditional stunt competition, I I love watching the good guys, you know? But you kind of get bored when there's only one rider because it's, it's just not so much... It's just slow... Not slow-paced. What's the word? Paint dry? <laughs> watching <laughs> watch paint dry? <laughs> or grass grow? Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's more like... um, It's just quiet. Yeah. yeah you know and, and you're not on your edge like oh shit you know yeah. like unless they're about to wreck then you're like oh shit but yeah. we definitely had a few of those 
Yeah, there's oh, some, yeah. You guys we got like, a couple of those. Saying, like everybody pushes each other. Like try to try to level up from each other. Oh, it elevates yeah. quickly. And so it starts going really fast pace, and then you start seeing some really sketchy stuff. But <laughs> it you keeps you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, you see the whole crowd focus on the clock. You know, they finish their run. Everyone's that's yeah. what immediately looking at the clock. So like the fans and the athletes, and it, it, it's fun. You get everyone engaging. You know, they're rooting for this guy to beat that time, or you see a twenty nine pop up, and everyone's. It's it's wild. You got to be there to experience it. It's yeah. pretty cool. So who's the fastest so far between the two events you guys have done? Jesse Ryan came to both and won the first one, second at the second one. Uh, Tosinski got first at the second one. He wasn't at the first one, though. Mm-mm. No. He was fast. Yeah, he was fast. Yeah, he was fast. really fast. Yeah. By three seconds, he said? Yeah. Wow. He got in the 26s. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. I've been watching it. 36, forever. that's right. I thought he was gonna take it. Yeah. Which he did. Yeah. <laughs> so, no. You should you should have bet on that. Maybe you would have won something. No, no, no. no. <laughs> he took he <laughs> took the risk at the Joker lane and it ended up working in his favor. So it was cool to see too. That it was cool to see that we set that option up. Either you can hit the jump, if you don't want to hit the jump, you can go around. Yeah, I didn't know. And, and, he, and we set it up super, super close, and it was probably one of those things where you would have honestly thought jumping it would have been faster. faster. You know, that was what we thought. thought yeah. That, yeah. But, so wow. So what are the rules? What are the rules? The rules are you leave, you do every turn on the track Mm -hmm. in the right direction. And if it's just in in the manner of the turn and you just have to get around the course without, you know, knocking over a cone, that's a second. Every cone you knock over, there's a second. Second One second. Added to your time. Okay. So, and then you just have to do the run the quickest you possibly can. And what about foot down? Does that matter? No, it's fine. It's racing. This is you know. drifting. This uh, event ate some shoes up. That's for sure. Yep. Yeah. We need a shoe fine. sponsor. Yeah. We're looking for a shoe Why sponsor. If anyone's in a shoe sponsor. <laughs> I saw uh, not only mine. I saw junkyards. His foot was bleeding too. We yeah. put tape over it. <laughs> Went back out. His foot was bleeding. No, oh, yeah. the bars. Oh shit. Not bad. Yeah, those shoes definitely yeah, destroy really shoes. Bad. It was like when you're trying to race. Yeah, you're not thinking about, oh man, I need to put my foot a certain way. You just yeah, gotta, I have to. Start I need doing. to get going. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I had to see somebody do the speed up around that whole course. That would have been cool. But just about whatever's fastest. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, you can't really think about style and shit yeah. when you, you know some style in there, but I mean, with like speed up. But I still don't. Opinions, a lot I still don't think we've seen like the best of the best of of our, of our competition. Like, there's still a lot of guys that are sitting on the fence that are really, really good that drift well, you know, and just not sure if you know they want to come out because this can also devalue you, right? You is what so? most people think. I would think. Why do you say that? Um, if I don't go out and do well, I. Don't have much value in it. Like I look like a less of a of, of a, a stunt rider, rider stunt or something rider. like that because I didn't win a race. But I that's mean, the that wrong mindset that's the wrong mindset. Them. We want everybody it's to racing. come out and try and and at least you know work. It might take some work to be good at it. I think there's plenty of guys that are going to take to it like a duck in water. You know that already drift and they're already there. You know. I think they haven't. They don't know about it yet. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think a lot of them don't one don't know about it yet. Daytona definitely got you guys exposure. And two, it's out of their comfort zone, you know? Right. Like right, you right. said, it might devalue I don't know if that's the right word, but maybe. I, I don't really look at it that way, you know. If you watch Supercross, the greats have their bad days, you know, it's it's just racing, you know. Yeah. If everyone has their good day or bad day, it doesn't matter if you're the best or the worst. It's it can fluctuate, and sometimes the courses trip these guys up because the obstacles just aren't their strong suit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it is against the clock, and the challenge is on, and the pressure's on when when they're all chasing that that fastest time. And it's a different kind of uh, competition or chase. You right. know, it, it, you're racing the clock. So. Yeah, and and like I was saying, it's not like <clears throat> us stunt riders are practicing that. No. So I could see why. Not yet. People could be intimidated yeah. by it, you know, like, uh, I'm good. I'll just do the normal competitions and, and 
Yeah, and and stick with what I know. Those are fun. Like I've done the bra a couple of times. It's a lot of fun to go and do and be invited, and it's 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 a great time. But racing has always been something where you just it was you and the track. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think companies are going to get wh- more behind the racing because mm. it's just normal and people are used to it. You know? Yeah, it's it's definitely a place where companies can promote their product. I would think, you know, like the way that it's set up, we have a lot of really good um, opportunity for marketing. You yeah, know, with a race course that's all. Uh, just whatever the sponsors may be on the course and on the bike, it's just maximum exposure for, for actual sponsors. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. As much social as we can. Even for the rider. Yeah. We want this to be a platform for the riders and for sponsors. It's, it's all about growing. Oh, yeah. And if this can help you get from one stunt ride to the next and race, I mean, we're like a rodeo family. Well, I'm telling you, wherever the money is, the guys the riders are going to be there. They're going to fucking be there. I it just that's all. Oh, and if they it's, chase the whole series, they could probably leave if they win them all 15 grand at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, if you add up how much money we're putting into the purse money for first place, start to finish it, it adds up. So yeah, even second place or third place, you know. Yeah. What is what is a, the purse money? Is right it different now, it's each a, event. Um, fifteen hundred for first place. Okay. And then the what we mentioned earlier with Legend on on second place, and then Recluse top three. We cool. think that's a pretty cool deal. I mean, yeah. You register a hundred bucks and you get a clutch if you podium. Oh yeah, and, and it's not it's like you have to put third. it in your bike. You can sell it. Exactly. And how much? Is Same it? with the suspension. How much is the value of that? The clutches? I don't know. It, Pretty expensive. Very I mean, expensive, the, yeah. Kit. It's not just the mm-hmm. lights. And I mean, this is Legend suspension. It's like eight hundred bucks for a set. Yeah. Um, retail, um, shred wedge. I think it's like three hundred bucks. What's, two, a, two, what's a shred wedge? It it lifts your bike up so you can change your rear wheel or tire. Oh, okay. So okay, gotcha. Yeah. It's like a stand, bike mm-hmm. stand. That's cool. That's cool. I thought Bruce had one. No. Well, no. It's a it's a regular normal one. It's not a. Like the Harbor Freight one. Yeah. It, don't call us out, dude. <laughs> Man. Yeah, it's a Harbor Freight one. <laughs> it's still going strong. <laughs> oh, yeah, Harbor Freight. So what are the next events coming up? The next two are going to be... year. I think the them. next two are the Beggar Racing League grounds. We have three of those. And those are going to be uh, what we call the Triple Crown. So point, point chase. chase, start to finish. It's a what? Point chase. What's that mean? That means all three events are in a point chase with each other. So you don't just win it off of one event. You have to do good at all three. So oh. every BRL, you have to show up at do well. And at the end of that, the points matter. Yeah. It's do, you, do you win purse money at each one? I think we'll throw... We That's up for... It's typically with the, with something so. along those lines, you're chasing it start to finish. So it okay. kind of defeats the purpose if they win each time. If you see. want them to come compete in all three. I mean, they could do one and say they they win and they get 30 points for their win that time. But a couple people don't show at the second and third one. You could win possibly off of only going to one. But the philosophy behind the Triple Crown is you come to all three, you rack up points depending on where you place in from first second and third event okay yeah okay and what are those events and where uh what dates and where i think may is our first one in nebraska for the brl i forget the name of the the complex and then the next one's gonna be michigan which is i think april we got too many on the schedule for me to keep track of i'll, but, uh, I'll put all the information yeah. in the description below and if you and how to sign up so you guys know where to go um, and you guys said they can sign up and first come first serve. And oh. is it open registration for each one? Like right before or how often? How- registration so- will open up probably a month before each event. Just for so- the bigger racing league ones. Are you going to open it up? And those riders only are allowed to compete in all three. Now you're making me think about how are you going to do that? <laughs> yeah, um, how are you guys going to do that? Um, well, with the beggar racing league, we probably are going to have to narrow it down to, to the guys that that, that come that come because we can't. 
That's it's a you. triple crown. Yeah. Yeah. Put it's you on a the triple payroll. Crown. Comment yeah. below if you have any ideas because they need help. <laughs> it's it's more it's, or it's less for, yeah. a points chase. If you want to win, you're gonna have to be at all of them. Yeah, I would think that there's your odds are best. Yeah, your odds are gonna be best because I can't imagine that Jesse's not gonna show up. He's been to two and he Whoa. enjoys that. He's a Canadian, and they You're have right. a limit of days that they're allowed there to are, be in America. Right. That's right. You're right. So he might, might need to find a wife first. Yeah. <laughs> well, ladies, uh, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse Ryan. You know, he's looking, maybe. <laughs> I don't want to speak on his behalf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's someone he can, like, figure. hire to yeah. be his wife. <laughs> He'll get Just marry me. I'll pay 500 bucks and we'll call it a day. <laughs> well, I hope that doesn't run into his championship, mess up his championship run. Oh, that would suck. He gets deported or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> she, Can you get deported from She holds that green card over his head. We're going to find out. <laughs> I I guess. He should just come from the other border. Yeah. <laughs> and then he'll be golden. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's harder to get in from that border. Yeah, it is. You know. But um, so you got the three bigger racing league ones, and then what's next? You know, Sturgis Buffalo Chip. And that's in August. That's in August. It'll be the first weekend of the Sturgis Rally, whatever those dates are. Sick. But the first weekend, and that one's gonna be really cool. I've been working close with the chip on that, and we're gonna do. It's gonna be a two day event. The Friday before, we're gonna have a parade with the Buffalo Chip, and they want all the participants to run that parade and let them get rowdy, wheelies, burnouts. Like they want that. What do you mean a parade? They're gonna have like a motorcycle parade, what? Kind of going through town, and they want the BRL or not the BRL, the Drifter guys Sick. to run it. And um, then we're gonna open up the course and let everyone do an open practice, kind of figure out the flow of the course. And then Saturday is gonna be um, practice qualifying competition. Um, times to be determined yet, but Friday, Saturday, first weekend of Sturgis. Shit. More info will come. We got a few months to figure out the fine details. But... Yeah, yeah. Gabe, how that, that parade's gonna be wild. The yeah. parade will be a lot of fun. How yeah. are you how are you not like wrecked after that? What with, do you mean with after? practice like the day before and then practice the day of oh, I was. and and I was the dead. the race? I was dead. You... I, I I felt it. <laughs> the, my body was completely wrecked. You were wrecked for like a week, huh? Yeah. It's not it's, it's nine I mean, laps. Uh-huh. It's nine. This is nine laps that you did. Yeah. Yeah. Three practice, three qualifying, three race. That's a lot. I feel like. Hey, but you get it's get tough in between. Oh, okay. You do so. I mean, it's tough. Be... Yeah. You yeah. get arm pump. Oh, I had it horrible. Like the the first time I went out, I think it was in practice. It was like what is it, forty something seconds, and I could even hold on at the end. Oh yeah, but, I know. I bet. But that's usually how like whenever I warm up. You know, I'll get super bad arm pump at first and then give it like 45 minutes and go back out there. And then it starts, you know, I loosen up a lot more. Yeah. Definitely have to warm up. Yeah. I was talking to, it's funny. I was talking to Jay Brew and he was telling me he was still sore like a week ago. <laughs> Said his body was wrecked, but he, he went down pretty bad. Oh, did he? Yeah, he was sending it to the he was, he, he was He was, he was probably going like what, he launched 20 it feet on the jump. To the cone. <laughs> so, yeah. He was sending pretty was good. Wild. wild. Yeah, that's so cool gnarly. are you guys gonna add in more, more jump jumps i'd like to keep the jump flow going i don't know about more he he loves it i'm not a big fan that's why i do i think it's a great option mm -hmm. for a joker lane like mm -hmm. it, leave it up to the rider you know what i mean yeah. if, if they think it's faster maybe some days it will be yeah. yeah won't be forced it's optional it's optional and the timing's so close with the two yeah and we try to keep it that way so so that it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, what's it there for? No one's gonna hit exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone loved it. Everybody loved Everybody. it. Yeah. I was like the one person that wasn't hitting it because in practice it was just, just a mess. Blue yeah. is kind of blowing flying, stuff off. Yeah. I think, boards going. I think it's a cool option. It's it puts, fun. It's for sure. Fun. Yeah, it puts people out of their out of their comfort zone and trying new things. Because I, who was it that posted? <laughs> you shared the story. Um, I forgot who the fuck it was. P posted a. Like, I wasn't planning on doing this, or there was something funny. I, I don't remember what it was, but we were talking shit. I think it was something like they weren't planning on the on the jump or something, maybe. Yeah, I was, I was, I was trying to find it because I wanted to bring it up on this podcast, but basically, they were, weren't planning on doing the jump, but they fucking tried it anyways. And yeah, it was probably it was kind of a sh shit show, <laughs> but that's awesome. I love how yeah. you guys are just 
fucking having fun. You know, it's not very professional, but you guys are just figuring it out, you know, and and it's kind of inspiring. And I want my audience to get inspired, too, because I would love to see more things like this. Not just just stunt competitions, stunt competitions, too. I would love to see more of that. Yeah. But think outside the box. These guys just came together and everything you guys love. You mesh, mesh, you love racing, you love Harleys, you like stunt riding, and you meshed it all together, and you're making this shit happen, and you're doing the thing. That's sick. Thank you. Thank you. It's something different. And it's something different, and people are here for it, you know? Even, like I said, the skepticism's there, but once you sh- show what your vision is, then people start getting on board, you know? Oh, yeah. So keep going. You guys are doing great. We got 26 guys registered for Daytona, and, I mean, we could have had a lot more. I just, we we had to cut it off, and we're going to trim, but we're going to trim it down from that, and it's just, it's too, too much. What was the hardest part? Huh? What was the hardest part about hosting it? Uh, You can't really control the rain. That was, oh shit! Oh, I forgot yeah. about it. We did have the rain. Yeah. I was texting and I was like, "Holy fuck, it's raining!" Jesus. <laughs> so we went. We went from trying to qualify to it was kind of unfair because of the rain. Yeah. Our our track went away. So at that point, we kind of had to shift gears, and we just decided we'll just put everybody in, and it's fair, and everybody gets their race runs. Well, and also to add on to that. I thought it was cool that it was a boat. It was a boat. Riders, you know? Yeah. And everybody was stoked. And that's something we've we've said. If there's something dangerous on the course and you guys come together as like a group and you guys want to vote on it and everybody's in agreement, we'll, we'll, we'll change it for sure. I don't want anything to happen to our riders. I want them to be comfortable first and then race. You know what I mean? Like if you're having fun and you're motoing a track, you're going to have fun and go fast, you know? Yeah, yeah. You have to have fun first. Totally. And it has to be possible. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. But just because you can't do it and seven other guys can, they're probably not going to align with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So So how does that voting go? Like, or is it just... Unanimous voting? decision. If you everybody there feels as if they are in danger, they're probably going to say, hey, we're all in danger. And yeah. then you kind of have to listen to that. Yeah. 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 The rain threw us a curveball because it was like dead in the middle of qualifying. And, you know, you could tell some of the guys are a little bummed because they were running it dry. And then these guys got thrown the oh, wet off the well. of the course. So it's like, sections. got it. It was hard, but everyone came together. And after that little bit of rain, it stopped and the rest of the show went on pretty good and it was dry. And, Everyone was happy with the amount of runs. They were all equal. You yeah. know, everyone got three shots at their fastest time. So it worked out. It's just And the course came around to where as we were going through the the meat and potatoes of our show, it was getting better. It was, you know, the track was there. And I think some of the fastest times came out of the very last session. Mm-hmm. It, like straight from the get go. They were at, you know speed they were ready they were ready the track was ready they were ready by the because we finished up our qualifying to let it dry off we went through the slick part everybody had to deal with it yeah you know and that's the thing like everybody has to deal with the same stuff you know maybe it did rain in the middle of qualifying and some people got some better runs but when it came to racing it was all dry and it was it was all equal it was all equal yeah yeah and we, we got lucky on that yeah yeah that's that sounds yeah, crazy. the weather Fuck. was was taunting that the whole day or two leading into it, and even that day, like we're gonna do it at six. We look at radar, we're fucked at six. <laughs> you know, oh, we're gonna do no. it at yeah. Just Amy was <laughs> yeah, it was, it was it was downpouring. Yeah, so but, uh, the but if w- we ever came around for the better, it, it worked out. But if we ever get to where we want to be, like maybe we can throw this in an arena or you know indoor and. St- be able to sell some tickets controlled to it, climate. you know what I mean? And yeah. in a controlled climate, sell some beers, do something cool. So mm-hmm. what is your guys' ultimate goal? X Games. X Games? <laughs> X Games. Yeah. That uh, would that's be cool. a goal of mine. <laughs> For me, I think it would be cool to have some of our, you know, elite stunt athletes or, you know, Harley riders on that platform. I just, I think it would be the coolest thing. It's, it's not something that we have access to right now. Yeah. You know, there's not even an outlet for us. No, not at all. 
Well, how, what organizations do you need to click with to get into X Games? Uh, I mean, I think we just need to prove ourselves and showcase what we have to offer. I don't know necessarily about organizations, but showing what the show is, showing that it has a following. You know, I, X Games has played with like um, dirt track racing in the past and trying to get like Harley mm. involved. Um, and I think nothing against that, but I think this might be a better show for their platform, better for TV. A mm -hmm. um, little bit more mixed up of jumps and obstacles compared to an oval track. Mm. Um, yeah. It's it's a good fit. We just got to fine tune it and figure it all out, you know. And from the two we did, we've learned a ton, you know. It's it's not necessarily the show. It's just more of we're not event people, you know. I <laughs> I make aftermarket parts for Harley's, you know. Um, I don't put on events, so we're learning. And I'd say we did pretty good for two so far. Hell yeah! And and you guys are gonna beast mode it this year where you have no choice but to learn. Right, exactly. Like, you guys are sink or swim because you guys are fucking booked. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we are. Fuck? This is your first, basically your first year of doing this, and I can't believe the venues you guys have. It's so sick. Yeah, and Daytona was awesome because we, we had 26 guys, and a lot of those names are, like, known names in the industry. And, man, it was awesome, but it was, it was a lot. And I keep touching on it. We got to... We got to trim the athletes down just because it, it it draws out the show for too long. You know, it nothing against having too many, but it I think it kind of hinders the show, especially at certain places where we're not going to have a whole time slot to do 26 guys. It yeah. might be like you have two hours and knock the shit out, yeah. you know, so we got to fine tune that side of things. And it's just learn as we go. Yeah. yeah, no, totally, totally. So what are you thinking um, for the, what do you call the three series? The Triple, triple Crown. Tri the Triple Crown. Oh, the Bagger Racing League. Yeah, the Bagger Racing League Triple Crown. How many riders do you think you're going to be able to fit in? I'm thinking 20, and then we qualify in 15 or 10 out of the 20. So oh, you, you cut the field in half going into the main competition with qualifying. And when are you going to open registration for that? Probably a month before. So next next month, registration should open up for the Nebraska round. Um, there's a lot of back-end website building and stuff and kind of getting prepared, like small details, boring stuff that I deal with. So um, You'll announce it on Instagram? Instagram and all the other platforms. We'll probably have the, the participants push it out there. And Which, which ins Instagram? Um, mainly the Drifter Cross page, Drifter underscore Cross, and then Sly Fox page as well. We use that that platform and you know these guys always push it and what oh, yeah. do, so. so make sure you guys are following the drifter cross instagram page because we got to start going mainstream you guys mm -hmm. so start practicing so that we can get in front of the eyes of the you know the people and and this is kind of sick because people one they already know racing they love it already and they're here for it where we get a lot of hate i feel like in this the Harley community and the, mm, I, I feel like it's hard for people to accept stunt riding. Yeah. What do you think? I agree to a certain extent. I mean, they think we're assholes. Well, if you're doing it on the streets, <laughs> I know, but there's nowhere else. There's nowhere else to do it. Yeah, I know. For it's, the most part. Not, I mean, where we live, it's, I mean, we don't really have lots. Like I come down here, you guys have awesome lots. So yeah, we're but they're just building. Fun. Yeah, they're building, so you you don't really have it for very long. Yeah, it's it's hit or miss. Totally. You have some people that absolutely hate it, and some people that love it. Yeah, but that's what I mean. This is also I think it's so rad about this because it's a close course deal, and it's professional, it's legit. Yeah. And it's not that we couldn't add a stunt show to it. We yeah. have every athlete. Pretty much that can Already start that that's outside, that, that could do it, you know, and just having the time and and structuring the show with it in there. And if we had our way, yeah, sure, we would probably have something in there that that let that happen because that is a big part of our sport, you know. This is the right. stunt rider and what they do. Totally, totally. Well, and you guys already have all the barriers and it's already there and all yeah. the shit that needs to go into it. So yeah, the Are course is built. Up? Huh? You gonna try it out? Be the first female. It. Guys, I need to learn how to drift first. You got it. <laughs> what the Me fuck? Too. 
<laughs> Don't look at me. I am <laughs> still basically kind of retired. I got one foot in and one foot out. It's hard. Okay. <laughs> let me start practicing and I'll, I'll let you guys know maybe next year. Love to have you. That'd be sick. 100. That'd be sick. And, and Bruce is already wanting to practice. So maybe I'll have the same. Does he pose. really need to practice? Yeah, he doesn't need to practice. I think he's pretty good. Okay. You know what I like is the wide drifting. So you guys should hit some more wides. Well, that's... A lot of talk on keeping it moving, yeah. less circles, mm-hmm. opening up some corners. More flow. More flow. Yeah, the wide More natural, so flowy course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The crowd loves yeah. that too. I think they love it too. I think that it's almost, some of the guys, you got to almost like tell them they can do it. Like allow them to? Yeah. They they hold themselves back. Like most yeah. of the guys go to try to do something like that. And they're kind of like, man, I don't know. And then by the end of the night, everybody's Everybody. doing it. Right. Have you ever thought about putting out things that they specifically have to hit with their tire? No, but that's something like a balloon. That's a cool idea. Right. Like a balloon with a little pinata. Or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pin- yeah. Like, like confetti. <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be sick because, um, you know, the guys always practice like hitting, yeah, hitting, hitting shit, like you know, but that, I think control. that's, I think that's ultimately where, um, knowing where your rear end is and things like that, that's what yeah. helped uh, win the race, I think. That it's, could be something that deletes a second off your time if right. you hit it right or Down something extra. Points or yeah. Something. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just when you do that, then you got to be more focused on the program. It makes it more complicated on. Kind of yeah. Design. Yeah. But and, it's, to keep the judging down and keep it racing is probably the easiest. Yeah. 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 Because the judging point. part is where it gets yes complex right yeah and even just not keep, keeping count of cones like we have turn turn marshals oh. watching every turn really yeah, yeah and then they, they flip that cone they tell they you one second and are they dicks <laughs> when he goes why did you hit him did i hit a cone mm. I, I was super conservative when i read, like yeah. went out for each run i was just trying to like i saw everybody really pushing really hard and they were making like, you know, I mean, no offense or, you know, they're pushing and they would make like some mistakes where I was just trying to go out and just cruise and make it through the course. Because if you make a mistake, you know, that's like two seconds off. Mm. Just trying to like reset up and get back onto the course. Take it slow, but actually get through it correctly exactly. is what you're saying. Instead that's of slop- what I was sloppy. Yeah. yeah. Just keep it really controlled. A strategy. Because if I, I mean, for me personally, if I just go out there and try to go balls to the walls i'm probably gonna mess up and either Low hit a cone or or go way too wide and then have to like hit the brake and turn around and go hit the cone again yeah so and you'll hear fun. that from every rider it's like you just really got to hit your marks on every one of the turns and do your best but it's not really trying to push yeah it's just trying to get through it as cleanly as possible right. and all that together just lowers your time you know yeah. being the smoothest you can possibly be yeah, I like that you guys don't have any um, opinion based judging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's yeah. the best thing about yeah. it. You know, it's your, your, your talent is is your, you know, what makes your breaks you. Time doesn't work. Honestly, and we like that aspect too. You know, it takes the stress off of us. It's mm-hmm. like we we watch the clock. We don't have to. We don't have to get into style points or any of that stuff just makes so. the show more enjoyable you yeah. just get to sit back and watch it and watch them race you know? yeah the yeah. the traditional competitions get sticky in my opinion and um it's it's really like i feel like it's when you get people's opinions involved you're like and then you have people that aren't even in the scene judging you're like you what the fuck is the way. point of even competing you know and I've seen my husband's heart getting broke and it pisses me off. You know, I have a lot to say about that, but I won't. But I don't like the opinion based judging. It really, but it's hard. Like, how the fuck are you supposed to do a competition without an opinion? You know, you have to do point based based off of certain tricks or balance point tricks. Or, I don't even know. How the crowd vote? I haven't had figured out the answer yet. I, I don't That's even think one. the crowd's yeah. a good, good, I know. good one. Because yeah. then you got to ba- base the opinion off. This crowd voted for that. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's still yeah, an it opinion. It just gets messy. It's hard. It's hard, and I don't know what the answer is yet, you know, as far as that goes. So, 
but there's a lot of fun things that you guys are doing with the games and and making it fun you know what i mean like that stunt riding is still awesome you know it's the the foundation for this yeah you know what i mean like it's the exact same thing it's just you're racing yeah we're stoked about the games because it is less pressure because it's not opinion based right mm-hmm. you know and it, it i feel like it's more fun for the guys because it's not opinion based because then it's like yeah. oh i fucked up i fucked up yeah right. you know yeah. it's not yeah. like dude i did the best fucking run i've ever done and this motherfucker just doesn't like me and or he doesn't respect handbrakes or whatever the issue is and he's judging me based off of his opinion because his buddy's in there or you know yeah. i'm gonna shut up i'm gonna keep going if i want okay <laughs> someone shut me up <laughs> anyway so um where can they find where can everyone find all the information about your upcoming events for the year on the website uh, www.drifter-cross.com okay yeah. okay and that's where they so can everything register. will be there you can find the rules you can register you can find the schedule for the year um and that's about it yeah and we're gonna start putting merch out there and things like that we got asked a lot about merch while we were there so we're gonna build on that and the instagram as well instagram please follow the instagram um at drifter underscore cross um well, how speaking of sponsors, how can uh, one company support you guys? Uh, well, reach out to the either DM, slide into the DMs, and Eddie will see them, or uh, oh, shoot. go to the website. <laughs> <laughs> um, and all the information to reach out to us is there. Okay. Yep. And then we have a deck, and it kind of breaks down levels that you can come in at, and okay. you choose, you know, depending on where you want to come in, the exposure you want to give your brand, and it's all up for negotiation too. You know, if there's some way that works better for your brand to intertwine, we're all ears. You know, we want to see how we can help you and we just want to grow this thing. That's so. dope. That's dope. It's, as, um, can they sponsor specific events mm-hmm. depending on where you can go events is specific. You can follow it start to finish. You can do too. You know, it's all up for negotiation. Cool. Mm-hmm. Dope. Well, you want to talk about the contingencies as well? Another thing that kind of comes from the race world is contingency. Yeah, what's that? So, you know, brands can come in and say you're running, like Legend comes in and and they say, if you get on the podium and you have our suspension on your bike, we're going to pay you 500 for first, 200 for second, and 100 for third. Okay, yeah, Eddie was talking about this. Contingency. So... And we're all for a contingency. It's a way to support your brand. It's a way to support the riders. I see. Mm-hmm. So if you are you want to sponsor your event, you can say, I want a contingency on my, for my uh, program. Yeah, if you, you say you want to do a contingency program. And normally you set like a dollar amount. So Legend might come in with, we have $1,500 or $15,000 allotted for a contingency that we're willing to spend. And then once we get to that, we're, we're done. Out. Yeah, we're capped out. But... First gets this, second gets that, third gets that, but you have to be running our shocks and maybe wearing our hat on your well, on shirt podium. or some shit. Yes. No. So podium. The brand gets their recognition. Um, it kind of pushes the riders to maybe support the brand. Mm. It's just a different way to. I love sometimes that. you don't spend the money. Sometimes you're like, damn, I spent all my money. But yeah, you know, you you throw it out there and see what sticks. And then if you get a sponsor who wants to buy in, and they have signage on the course, and then they have signage on a bike, and then signage on a podium that maximizes their exposure whenever they get somebody on the podium. You know what I mean? It just yeah, huh? helps for them. And that's where the whole economy thing i was talking about goes around right. and around and around exactly the the riders get paid you guys get paid the company gets paid and everyone gets exposure and it just keeps going and the when the companies get paid then they pay the riders and then it just keeps going back and, and that's why we're trying to go racing yeah yeah i see i see so we did with sly fox contingency which is just wearing a a hurt a shirt and a hat you know and jesse ryan took that offer and he got 500 bucks in his pocket what yeah that's sick yeah. so you guys are kind of doing a contingency just for sly mm-hmm. fox mm-hmm. cool yeah. cool that's dope so. do you guys have any sponsored riders gabriel over here yeah i need to shape up practice <laughs> a little bit more <laughs> no i mean i need to well yeah no i for sure need to go out and practice more but also bike setup i need to yeah. get comfortable on that bike it was the first time i ever rode it yeah um that but, that matters for sure for sure um but killed it at the first one. On. Oh yeah, I would yeah. say believe in you and they and they support sound like they support you and yeah. that's all that matters, you know. Yeah. Because they see potential in you, you know. 
Well, uh, 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 but he's been around since the beginning. Very helpful, you know, and we're all in Orange County. And so it's easy for us to link up and kind of, I mean, you guys spend a handful of days at, at my shop every week and we just kind of brainstorm and think about stuff and play around. Puts, yeah, some parts Testing land on his bike every now and then. And see how it goes. Um, but he's the only real stunt guy I, I have. Um, we're, I, I sponsor guys in the racing world. So oh, we have a gotcha. whole, okay. we have a whole race team that competes in the beggar racing league. And I partnered with suburban Harley Davidson shout out to suburban, by the way, they're great people. And we run, shoot, we're going to have three baggers this year, three baggers, uh, Pan Am and I think a Dyna. So we got a whole fleet and then we got Jesse Janice running the, the GP bike, which is like the bike I sponsor the most or I'm the most involved with. Then we got Cody Gilmore comes from the Supercross racing world, piloting one of the baggers. And then we got Jake Masters, oh, uh, the Aussie from Down Under. Um, mm -hmm. He's running one of the baggers. And shoot, am I missing anyone? Yeah. Hey, Jake came and ran Drifter too. He flew all the way out from Australia. Love you, Jake. You kind. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> <laughs> but but uh, on the way there, we saw him on the on the bridge. Me, Jay Brew, and uh, Cyrus. We we're riding over the bridge, and he was pulled over by a cop. <laughs> <laughs> we're like what are you doing but just to no, show buddy. up and put it out there on a dyna with no front brake yeah he oh. lost his front brake yeah, yeah. what he, he was he was killing it that's, that's so, skill right there yeah, yeah for sure that's dope yeah. yeah he came and supported had a good time i'm glad he just got his visa he can be here for five years so oh he did yeah he did yeah awesome that's yeah. not easy so that was kind of giving him a hard time last year and he figured it all out i think it's an athlete visa Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. So good for you, Jake. Yeah, good job. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. All right. Well, any last words you guys want to? No, I just appreciate you letting us come on and talk about yeah, Thanks for having us. Thank you guys for coming. I'm like stoked that you guys, like, this is a big deal for me, you know, because. <laughs> big deal for us. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we can get the word out and more people can support it and come out. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Anyone that is interested in supporting what they're doing. Make sure you go to their website at drifter-cross.com. Mm -hmm. I'll leave all the information in the description. Sign up if you want to ride and and uh, race at one of their events. And make sure you follow their Instagram so you can see when their registration opens. Um. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. It's dope. Yeah. It's hot as hell in this room. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm toasty. <laughs> I started sweating Peace. so bad in the beginning. It's so hot. <laughs> I was like, oh, it wasn't the heat. It's the is the anxiety? Like, oh, dude, honestly, yeah. I think it was. <laughs> I was like, at first, I like just froze. I was like, "What the what fuck the is that?" I know. When I'm, I, such, I'm so good at talking with people, but for some reason, it's behind the camera or something. It changes like, it. Makes what's it different. the camera? Remember yeah. when I asked him a question, he I like blacked out. Yeah, he like, like blocked. Oh, he's really he's like, "We're not recording, are we?" <laughs> We're like, yep. Yeah, uh, we've been <laughs> recording for like 20 minutes oh, now. 